Cyberpunk to anger the demo gods. I've already done it. <clears throat> and by having jet lag and uh, struggled with the projector for 15 minutes this morning and given up on the way I originally intended to do this presentation. I'm going to talk about Microraptor Lua, which is a small subpart of Microraptor GUI, which is a project I started playing with um, about half a year ago. And Microraptor GUI is in good traditions of various projects named after some random animal. Uh, Microraptor GUI being a four-winged dinosaur capable of guided flight. So the GUI part of the name is actually meant to be lowercase. It's not an acronym. It's short for guided flight. Um, and uh, I read my talk description earlier today, a uh, little bit past midnight, and realized that I had promised to actually show off this within itself. So I'm currently running within a desktop environment written in Microraptor Lua, which is the Lua version of Microraptor. Um, uh, I actually want to start off by asking some questions. Uh, how many people here have played with vector graphics? As an uh, Inkscape or uh, Illustrator? Okay, and how many people have programmed graphical user interfaces? Okay, so the, the topic of the presentation uh, sits somewhere in the overlap between these things. And I'm gonna start off with a small little example. Um, in Lua, and I'm not going to talk that much about things in the beginning, but I've drawn two things here. I'm drawing a triangle, which is red. Where I set the source to be red, I'm going to change it to be purple. And um, that triangle is movable. And we also have a movable circle. The way that I do this is not the way that you very often do user interfaces. Um, but I'm going to describe exactly the code that draws things first. I'm declaring this triangle object, which just has a couple of coordinates, 30, x and 30, y, where it starts off. If I change it, we will move where we have a starting position of this triangle. Um, and then I have a function, which is the actual drawing of the user interface, where I get some reference to Cairo, which is what I'm using for drawing the vector graphics. And I set the source color, and I move to the coordinates where I set the triangle starter, which was 3070 now. And then do a relative line, um, 100 pixels horizontally, and then a relative line, 190 pixels down. And then I say that for the vector shape that I have created with these three points, I want to listen for events, for touch events or mouse events. And I want to listen for events of the dragging type. And whenever such events happen, I want to call a function. And what I want to do is to change the x and y coordinates of the triangle. I want to add up with the delta coordinate which we had. And that's all I want to do there. And when I'm done doing that, I want to fill our triangle. And then do the same thing with the circle. But that circle has stroke instead. And we can make the circle be a different color. So we can do... Um, the green circle instead, and we can fill that one, as well as the... So now I have these two shapes. Um, and uh, it is only 
doing it within the actual shape of it. So what I'm doing is I'm rigging up the curves, and when I have an active curve I haven't filled or stroked, I can say that uh, whenever the user clicks here, do these things. This becomes problematic the moment when I put the circle above the triangle, because no, both of them, and um, when I click with the mouse or have pressed with my finger, I would have been dragging both of them. Um, the way I can fix that is I could say that um, if we actually take this green circle of ours and do something with it, uh, we can in the little function inside here, which due to how Lua works, Lua has first class functions, we can access closures. I can um, do something similar to what people does on the web and um, say that the events should stop propagating, going back further to the elements behind. Mm -hmm. Okay, propagate there. And now I can click this circle and it will drag both of them at the same time. And one thing that is interesting with the way I bring this up is that I can also um, adjust the scaling of this entire image, or I could do something that's more interesting with vector graphics. I will actually rotate the scene I have here. So if I decide to rotate all of that like this, the delta coordinates I have still apply correctly. So um, the coordinates in the event callbacks are the coordinates used while drawing, whatever how they might be rotated or scaled. So I could also do a scale in here and do those somewhat differently from each other and it will still work and do the correct computations. So another example uh, of vector graphics is Bezier curves. And uh, here I've rigged up a hard-coded example of a small Bezier segment with coordinates similar to how I had my triangles, but now in an array. And um, adjusting live. And this is also basic vector drawing as you would do it in PostScript, or in this case, Cairo. Um, but using those values. And I um, don't have a scene graph, I don't have any data structure I'm storing, I'm actually running this code for every single frame, updating it. The interesting part being that whenever I listen to something, I build up in addition to having the frame buffer with the result, I have a list of all the regions that are interactive and should be listened to, keeping track also of the current transformations that are happening and um, which type of events to listen to. And I should pro probably also mention that the kind of text editor I'm using now is also written using the same framework. And here's another quick example that builds up a list. Of such objects. But um, events and drawing things with vectors and having um, interactions on them is not how most usable user interfaces are. They consist of a lot of text. So uh, this Microraptor framework um, focuses on reusing the concepts of the web and uh, in practice CSS for how text can be styled and what you can do with it. 
in a sense, it is like a terminal on steroids. And um, even getting to the degree that you can feed it um, almost complete predefined set of XML with styling information. Uh, no, I jumped out of Lua and I do it in C instead. But uh, you can specify a rectangular region that it renders text or even style text or um, even SVG paths into. Hmm? Let's use the mic. Well, now I have a mic to hackle you with. Uh, oh. Are you actually parsing XML and, uh, and CSS? Um, yes. Um, the C library of Microraptor contains a um, CSS uh, implementation, um, which parses CSS and then understands all the CSS rules. And uh, the XML is a simple e event-based, kind of SACS-like XML parser. Um, which then builds up the CSS on the fly, but also keeps track of uh, which um, XML element you've opened up, which classes you're entering, which IDs it has, so it builds up the CSS path. And um, if I go back to this one, where I call Microraptor GUI start with style, as I span color red, um, I'm starting a span, and the XML parser does the same thing. It starts divs and spans, so it builds up the CSS path as specified in the W3 specification, and it does the correct cascading in lookup, so it has a um, style object with all the information that you can dereference during rendering. So I could uh, jump out of this and instead um, run a different demo. Um, so this is a tiny little web browser-like thing showing a slide, which is a stupid little HTML document saying which backends Microraptor has. It has a GTK backend, which allows you to use a full GTK window under Valent or X. Um, it has something called Memory Map Machine, which is a project which is what is being used instead of Valand or similar for compositing multiple processes and applications here. Um, and it also has the ability of actually running these applications straight in the terminal. Um, not this terminal, because it's a rather dumb terminal which is also written with Microraptor GUI. Um, so if I run this web browser, Ah, crashes, fun. Um, so this is a slightly more complex rendering with hover states. Um, also showing how it deals with inline SVG within kind of the browsed content. Uh, but yeah, the intentions, as I see it, is not that this should uh, be able to render arbitrary web pages. But for controlling some small amounts of typography in a user interface, it is useful to style it with CSS. Um, I also have quite a few small little examples. Um, so this is an Otello game written entirely in, um, in Lua with an AI as well. Um, which was like, oh, see, darkness doesn't always win. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it, that is, this is one of the games I thought could be useful for thinking about what works as a touchscreen UI. Uh, all the handlings of events uh, are generic. It doesn't, isn't tied to mouse and one or two or three mouse buttons. So you can have concurrent dragging events occurring. And uh, one thing to consider there for people who are thinking about how is this event things actually maintained is that for the, when you listen for drag events, it has drag, pr drag press, drag motion, and drag release. And the uh, callback registered for the dragging event becomes a closure that is first freed upon release. So it is the callback which is registered for the first frame when you actually render it. And then when you start dragging it, it's still the first one you registered, even though you're accumulating and other multiple touch events could uh, invoke the other callbacks. It's the first one that is alive until you actually release that touch drag gesture. Um, and there's also other events built into Micro Raptor. So it has um, uh, tap and hold. Um, and um, I think, does it really have that many more? Tap and hold. And uh, I believe it has double tap as well, and it does this ambiguation between different such classes of events. Another fun thing about the window manager, which is uh, written in Lua here, is that I'm trying to think about how I could create some form of tiled window manager that by default works somewhat well. And um, now I'm running ahead with this quasi web browser and two terminals. Um, ignoring that my terminals are buggy and broken. Um, but I have some tools to play some GIF animation. And uh, I'm not sure if people saw, but I've already had a couple of crashes. And uh, I can even try to force quitting this whole window manager. Um, and oops, no, we're gone. And do I get video output on the console? Let's see, hoping I do. No, I don't. It's too bad. Well, let's get back to X and see if he... Okay, we got it in X at least. So I will, instead of uh, running it on the virtual console where I didn't get video output, I will run the C-based window manager instead. And the clients are still running, keeping their positions. But the C-based window manager doesn't have tiling, so. Um, and this is also how the um, small demo thing I was showing the code samples in was written. It was using the same infrastructure for having uh, child processes um, being composited in the main process. And all of that is done using memory mapping of files. Seg faults are fun. Backends. So the sizes of these things are not really, really big. Um, the memory map machine thing, which uh, abstracts both the frame buffer events and uh, PCM, is 11 kilobytes. Minecraft GUI itself is 300 kilobytes. And then I'm using Lua JIT, which is um, three, 400 kilobytes as an interpreter. Um, which means that it should be possible to have these things running on even like ARM-based device with a root file system of uh, a couple of megabytes and, and then have a full 
editable development environment where you can write Lua code, both for the PC and, say, an e ink reader or some ARM based tablet. Um, that was my outline. Uh, there's a few things missing. Uh, I have plans for uh, adding better support for shaping of Unicode text. Um, but in general, as an experiment, this seems to be working out quite well. And the biggest advantage I see that it has is that you actually don't need to have a scene graph. You can render from any data structure or iteration APIs you have um, directly. So you cut out a lot of middleman and resource management, um, memory waste, and similar. Wow. So, so questions? Awesome. First round of applause. And I'm impressed that you dared invoking the demo gods, <laughs> as you say. It's always great to see some live coding. Okay, let's get up there. Uh, you talked about the different backends. Um, there are some frameworks like, for example, Maui and Love2D, which are becoming fairly popular recently. Have you considered integrating with those? I would imagine that maybe some, for example, Love2D users could be interested in uh, using this in their Love2D applications. Uh, I haven't looked really, really into that. Some of the way that things are being done for, in particular, the keyboard events here, is actually inspired by how Love2D um, does its keyboard handling. Um, but uh, third level interaction I haven't really considered. I'm doing this primarily for um, doing very experimental conceptual user interfaces and have ended up yeah, both in C and Lua creating like a full desktop and mini file manager and editor. <laughs> 